Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Dr. Dre. Hey, darling. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm fresh and so clean. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Fontenot. I'm the Managing Director for Black Health Matters. And as you can see, we have a very dynamic session getting ready to start here. It's real talk about diabetes. And to join me for this session is Dr. Spears, who will be our moderator, as well as Angie Stone and Dr. Dre. So um, just to get us all set up for this, I'd like to give you some background on diabetes and what's happening in our community a little bit here. So diabetes is a disease that happens when an individual's blood glucose or blood sugar levels are too high. Insulin is the hormone created by our pancreas that helps us control and properly utilize the sugar that we receive from food. However, in certain circumstances, a person does not have enough insulin to do this properly. The disease can be separated into both type one and type two diabetes. Black Americans, as we all know, are at a higher risk for type two diabetes due to multiple factors such as genetic traits, a higher prevalence of obesity and insulin resistance. So today we're excited and honored to bring you Dr. Reginald Spears. Uh, Dr. Spears is a board certified uh, internal medicine doctor. He is in the current, he's the current president of the new Lambda Sigma chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Inc. in Lake County, Illinois, and the president and founder of the Cornerstone Educational Foundation. His clinical interests include diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, and many more disease states. He believes that the best approach when practicing medicine is engaging each patient in their own health care. So with that, I'd like you to please bring a warm welcome to Dr. Reginald Spears, who will also be talking to Dr. Dre, as well as Angie Stone in this lively talk on diabetes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much. I am so happy to be here. Uh, as she stated, I am a board, side of inter board certified in internal medicine. And I've been practicing uh, as an independent physician for over 20 years. And I do, again, have a very special interest in the diagnosis and management of diabetes. Uh, as I am a diabetic myself, it runs in my family. Uh, on my mother's side, almost every adult on my mother's side has come down with type 2 diabetes. Um, so it's important for us to recognize those uh, pre-existing conditions that we have genetically and uh, to recognize that we need to start always looking into those things as we get older and how to screen, how we should be screened for it and talking to our doctors about that. Now on this talk today, um, you're going to hear different ways in which to manage or how others have managed their diabetes to get them under control. Um, I had wonderful conversation with our guest speakers, Dr. Dre and Angie Stone the other day about their diabetes. And I think you will all find their stories very interesting also. And one of the things I would like to emphasize is that, well, there are some traditional medicine ways to deal with diabetes. There are also non-traditional ways, but the common thread in the management of diabetes is how we eat or diet and getting exercise. Those are two of the most important things that you can do to manage your diabetes. And then in there's the traditional Western medicines that are available to you, but everything that we do should be also coordinated with your primary care physician, whether it's an inter internist like myself or family practitioner. Uh, and certainly if you have children who have diabetes with their pediatrician and their endocrinologist. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Sister Angie Stone and let her tell you who she is, if you don't already know, which I think that would be like a mistake of some, side, some sort, um, but, or you've been living in a hole somewhere. So, uh, and I let uh, Dr. Dre introduce himself and they'll tell you about their 
particular uh, issues with diabetes, and then I'll ask some questions of them, and we'll go forward from there, okay? Angie, it's on you. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, and good morning, uh, good afternoon for those who are on a different time zone, but I just want to say thank you all, Dr. Dre, uh, Deidre, uh, everybody uh, with uh, Black Health Matters uh, for uh, creating this panel and allowing us to have a voice. Um, as you very well know, I've put in over 40 years in the music industry, starting out with uh, hip hop onto R&B, neo soul, you name it, we've done it. Um, film, television credits, all of that great stuff. And with even with all of that, nothing could stop me from having diabetes but me. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it does not target people uh, who are, are, are less in demand, let me put it that way. Everyone and anyone uh, can possibly attract this, uh, this disease. Uh, but my introduction to diabetes was based on medication that was given to me uh, over 25 years ago. I was diagnosed with something called sarcoidosis and I was treated with steroids, uh, uh, which induced my diabetes. Um, taking 60 milligrams of steroids caused my body to go into all kinds of uh, shock systems. And as a result, not being aware and not really knowing uh, exactly how to control the situation I ended up in denial, which is something that we generally go through. We go through denial. And as a result of being in denial, you do more damage to your body because you continue to eat wrong. You're, you're uneducated about the damage that is causing you to eventually lose your kidney function, to overload with fluid, possibly go on dialysis, uh, which is, is critical to your lifespan. I have had all of these things happen to me. And when I finally did get a chance to really hone in on just how bad diabetes is, I knew that I had to do something because relying on all the medications that may or may not agree with you was just not it. I had to change my thought process and really uh, get to a place where I wanted to live and not die not take for granted that this disease is killing me and I had to be in control. And as a result, I changed my diet. It came after many years, after many failures, after kidneys failing, after renal failure, after all of these things that I began to realize, okay, this disease is serious. It's not playing with me. And I realized that I can't play with it. And as a result, I ended up changing my diet. And in the moment that I began to change my diet, my circumstances changed. And had I not done it, I would never have believed it if someone told me, okay, you gotta change the way you eat. You can't eat all these carbs. You gotta cut down on your starch. You gotta do this. You gotta monitor your sugars. You gotta, you know, if someone didn't drill that in me or if I didn't make the change, I probably wouldn't be here having this conversation with you right now. But as a result, I am a, a recovering diabetic. I'm no longer insulin dependent uh, because I've learned to control my diabetes through diet. Uh, I'm gonna allow uh, Dr. Dre to introduce herself because I could go on and on about the things that uh, uh, perplexed me uh, into a down spiral, but I'd rather focus on the up spiral. So I wanna save some time to talk to you later about how and exactly what I ate and what I did and how it's not so bad. Dr. Dre? Hey, Dr. Spears, good morning. Good morning. Greetings and blessings and love to everyone who's here with us. The wonderful Black Health Matters for putting this together. Deidre Tate, the beautiful, and one of my heroes, Miss Angie Stone from the incredible first female group of rap and hip hop, the sequence. Thank Let's you. talk about diabetes. Because people may have known my situation. My name is Dr. Dre. 
I was a co-host of a program called Yo MTV Raps today with my partner, Ed Lover, Team Money, and of course, Fab Five Freddy. I am a type two diabetic. I consider myself to be super bad because not only am I blind and not only am I an amputee, but I'm also a type two diabetic, but that doesn't stop my life. What happens is I decided to change my life. I decided to eat for life. One of the biggest misconceptions about type two diabetes is that, oh, it is a part of genetics, but it's basically in our communities because it's the food we're eating. Yes. It's what we're grasping when we go into the grocery store. Instead of going over to the produce section and filling up on greens, beans, mushrooms, onions, berries, and seeds, we go with easy. Instead of going in and deciding, well, I'm gonna fry chicken, I'm gonna eat another bacon sandwich, or I'm gonna have this juicy steak, we're killing ourselves by the food that we're eating. It's not our fault, it's what's been placed in front of us. So every time you stand in line for a chicken sandwich, or every time you stand in line for a triple burger and all those things, it affects your body. We are what we eat. My type two diabetes came from, I used to work at ESPN too, and I used to do movie reviews. So I was sent out to do reviews all over the country. And the thing they would do is hand me a supersized soda and a big bag of popcorn. So I thought I'd be better than that and say, you know what, I'll just take the diet soda. Diet soda is not of a help. It is still affects your body. So if you want to get away from diet soda or diet drinks of any type, water is the best for you. The yes. thing about diabetes, it's a sneaky disease. I call it, call it the, the nighttime killer because you don't know when it's going to strike because you think you feel well one day and the next day, as Angie was eloquently put it, you can have kidney failure. Your, your sugar can, can, can spike. Now, I had an accident last year where I fell down a flight of stairs and I had an infection in my right ankle, which got out of control because of the COVID. And my doctor and podiatrist at the time said they didn't want to send me to the hospital because they didn't want me to be diagnosed and them saying I have COVID. So we tried to do it with over-the-counter medication. Now, it was working, but then it was not. So it caused me to lose my ankle and my foot because of that, but diabetes held a part in that. And the thing is, not only do I not blame anybody for what happened to me, I am what you call a first round food addict. That's the, you can't beat that because yeah. we all have to eat. But what I decided to do was actually go out and learn how to eat a more plant-based diet. In other words, more greens, more beans, more mushrooms, more onions, more berries, and more seeds. Hemp seeds, flax seeds, tea seeds. These simple changes will change your health. Now, alongside of my um, primary doctor and my endocrinologist, I do the best that I can do, and they see those changes. I had reversed my diabetes last year because I've made such a drastic change in my diet. A lot of type two diabetics and diabetes is based on what you're putting in your mouth. So here's the thing. I don't blame anybody, but I learned to educate myself. That's the first thing you gotta do when you deal with diabetes. Educate yourself and believe the facts. Second, go to your doctor, work with your doctor. But there's many great, a lot of great information out there on what you could do to bring your A1C down, bring your sugars down and actually manage and also get rid of type two diabetes. It's not a death sentence unless you wanna make it a death sentence. Absolutely. And the last, but one of the most important things is exercise. You don't have to just sign up to a gym. You could just walk stairs instead of jumping in an elevator. You can get up in the morning, breathing, exercise, do it every morning. I meditate, I pray and I exercise. It's that simple because my life is important. My family, my friends, and my enemies want to see me around. So the blessing here is we're on this panel. 
We're blessed by great people like the great doctor here, the beautiful, vivacious, and amazing hero of mine, Ms. Angie Stone. And of Thank course, you. Black Health Matters. So when you're in your neighborhoods and your kids are running up and buying stuff that's a quick fix, or as a good friend of mine, Dr. Joel Furman would say, empty calories, let's start switching and G-bombing. And that's the most important thing we have to do. First and foremost, take care of our health. Yes. Without that, mm -hmm. all the rest of this is just nonsense. Our health okay. is our wealth. And guess what? I'm building a Fort Knox of health and wealth. That's what I'm doing. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You, Spears. Uh, I, we just got a question about uh, from a uh, I can't remember the name, but someone asked a question about how does exercise reduce uh, diabetes? Well, your body has an excess of glucose being stored and your muscles require glucose for energy. So the more you do, the more you use up and that helps lower your blood sugars. That's the basic truth. But I wanna to get to uh, some of the things that our, our guests uh, have stated. Uh, I think what you're hearing is that there are some things that your doctor should also be helping guide you to as far as your diet. One of the things that I try to do is refer uh, my patients to a nutritionist to start mm -hmm. to make sure that they know what they're eating. Right, I give them basic information as far as uh, carbohydrates and reducing them in their diets and also mm -hmm. uh, exercising. I mean, the simplest exercise in the world that anybody can do if they're not if they're physically able to is to walk. Right. You walk for at a good brisk walk for 30 minutes, uh, five to six days out of the week. You're going to not only use up that extra glucose, you're going to actually give your heart some benefit from that. And you'll feel stronger. Ex walking is a great exercise. You don't have to go and lift a whole lot of weights and uh, look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or anybody like that. You just need to move your body. Um, and the aspect of eating you know, if we're cutting out the carbohydrates for the most part or cutting them down because it's a hard thing to do. Managing diabetes on a personal level is very difficult because we're always in situations where someone is eating cake or a sweet potato pie or something like that. And you want a slice of that and you know you shouldn't have it, but there are substitutes that you can do in your diet so that you're not overwhelming yourself with the management uh, from a food perspective. So I tell my patients that I say, if you're eating right all the time on a regular basis, you can sneak those things in, but you can't have that big chunk of cake or pie. You got to keep it simple. And then you have to balance out the other carbs in your meal, right? So you want to reduce the amount of pasta or rice or bread or, or potato products as you eat them. You don't have a spaghetti, for example, and have a big giant plate full of the pasta noodles for spaghetti and then have bread on the side. You got to reduce all of that in order to maintain uh, healthy levels of your glucose so that you don't have uh, the potential for complications such as you've heard already, the loss of eyesight, kidney dysfunction, right? Peripheral neuropathy and arterial disease uh, in the lower extremities, which leads to um, poor circulation and the risk of infection. So this is the number one reason why people lose limbs is infection, as you heard. And usually that's because there's poor blood supply and the antibiotics that we might give orally may not get to that part of the body to really heal that infection. So we tend to lose limbs and digits and things like that. But if we take a, a really aggressive approach to diet and exercise, and if need be medications, which you work out with your, with your um, doctor. So myself, for example, as a physician, I try to give people an option. I say, well, if you're start off with an A1C that is in a reasonable level, but still above normal, uh, and what you, someone might ask me, what's normal in my office, I ask my patients to get their A1Cs below 6%, okay? And that is in the normal range or say pre-diabetes range. If you can stay there for the rest of your life, then you're going to less likely have complications of diabetes. So, but if someone comes in and their A1C is above seven, I give them the option of diet and exercise. As I said before, 
I send them to nutritionists sometimes. And then generally I give them information on uh, how to eat, right? And tell them this is what you need to do. If you're not the principal cook in your home, then you need to give this information to the person who's doing the cooking and the food preparation. You need to add these things to your diet and take these things out. And you need to do this on a regular basis. And you come back in a couple of months and I recheck your A1C. And if it's still high or it's higher than it was, now it's time for medication because you are not able to do the diet and exercise that we need to do. And sometimes it takes a complication from diabetes to motivate people to do what they need to do because it doesn't hurt. Diabetes doesn't hurt until you have a major complication. Now you can see it, you can feel it, you know, it's part of your everyday. Now you got to go to the doctor more often and, you know, your potential for being on dialysis, your potential uh, to lose your eyesight, potential to lose a limb, right? Things of that nature. And so if we take care of it early, like anything else that we do, we have the better, a better chance of uh, having a long, healthy life. And then you can get to the point where your A1C is below 6%. And then you can talk to your doctor about removing medications and things of that nature to, so that you don't have that burden. And you can say, hey, you can brag about it to your friends and tell your story like our two guests are telling their story and myself. And I'm, on a, I'm a traditionalist, so I'm on medications for my diabetes, but my diabetes is well controlled. And I don't get as much exercise as I should, and I don't always eat right. But, you know, this is the burden that I have to carry. But I do demand it of my patients. Isn't that weird? But uh, so I want to ask you, you guys uh, if you're currently taking any medications at all and how often you're seeing your regular primary care physician or your endocrinologist to help monitor your diabetes so that people will know what you're doing. Well, um, I'll answer first. Um, I am no longer insulin dependent. Mm -hmm. I started out with metformin, uh, which is the pill version, before I started doing the injections with the needles. But because I am a controlled diabetic, type 2 diabetic as well, I have in the last year have not been insulin dependent. Um, I see my doctor uh, once a month. Uh, because I've gotten to a place where I don't have to go every week or every other week, uh, being that I'm controlled. Uh, and you know, with the nature of life today, as we know it, we have virtual meetings. So I am contacted by my endocrinologist uh, uh, every uh, month. Like I said, I have a meeting uh, on the 13th of March, just because we, you know, we're, we're religious about it. Um, <clears throat> The medication uh, uh, for diabetes and metformin, a lot of people have difficulty with it. One thing I wanted to comment on, doctor, that you said earlier was poor circulation. What a lot of people don't realize with type two and type one diabetes is circulation is already uh, a problem when you're diabetic, but people that smoke cigarettes uh, as an undue pressure of circulation problems. I remember when I used to smoke cigarettes prior to knowing my diabetes had kicked in, my circulation had gone so poorly in my legs, but it was due to cigarette smoking. And ultimately that made me aware of how bad mixing those two things together are. You have a double whammy of possible amputation because the uh, nicotine in the cigarettes uh, clog your veins and mess your nerves and everything up. And a lot of people don't dig into that kind of stuff. But when you're faced with a crisis of, okay, your, your circulation is poor, your legs are numb, your feet are numb, your neuropathy has developed and you begin to understand that your circulation is poor because number one, you're a diabetic, but number two, you're a smoker. So I'm just advising all of the people that are listening that are diabetic or have family members that are diabetic, di uh, diabetic, you have to look into all of the effects of the things that you do. So I just wanted to say that because a lot of people are not aware that those work hand in hand in destroying you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dre? Okay, because I'm the, the, the messages coming through on the chat room make yeah. it very difficult for me to hear you when, when you guys are speaking. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask people for a moment, just hold the chats. 
because I would like to hear what Angie and the doctor are speaking. But let me, let, me, let me help some folks because people are saying, well, what do I do to help reverse the diabetes? I gave you some very simple thing to do as far as your diet, and that's more greens, meaning more salads, more kale, more collards. When it goes to the uh, bomb part, the bees, the beans, they're very simple. Black beans, you can get pinto beans, lentil beans. It's great to help yourself. You can also go with onions, red onions, regular onions, raw onions, fresh onions, not always fried onions, regular, just onions. Then you can go to mushrooms. Now, I know some people did do something different with mushrooms, but I'm talking about the mushrooms you can cook with that'll be very healthy for you and help restore your body. Very, someone was saying, oh, I like to eat candy and I like to have potato chips. That was on the chat side. Well, why not try some strawberries? Why not try some blueberries? Great antioxidants, blackberries, raspberries. And then when I say seeds, like I said, hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, these are things that's gonna help your immune system. So when you start to change those simple things, and I was blessed because I read a book called Eat for Life by Dr. Joe Furman that actually put me on a greater path and understanding of what I needed to do. And it helped quickly to reverse my diabetes. First of all, once you get off of those other drinks and those other foods, your taste buds come back. Your smell yes. comes back because you're not used to eating the proper foods. It doesn't mean everything has to be the salad or you, know, you have to eat some stuff you don't like. There's a lot of great foods out there that you ignore based on where you are around in your community. What's in your, it's your grocery store. So if you go to a good friend of mine, Dr. B, who worked with the late, great Dick Gregory, said, Dr. Dre, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the grocery store and I want you to go down the aisle and pick something that you want to eat. So I walked down the aisle and I said, oh, look at this macaroni and cheese. And I'm not a big macaroni and cheese fan, but he said, pick it up and read what the ingredients are. Right. And I was reading the ingredients and I laughed and I said, B, I'm blind. So well, have somebody read it. So I he read it to him and he said, you see all those chemicals that is in there? Put that back up on the shelf. That's not good. I want you to walk around to the produce section. And I did. He said, what do you see there? I said, well, there's some romaine lettuce, there's some spinach, there's some kale, there's some tomatoes, there's vegetables, there's fruits. He said, pick up one of those things and read to me what it says. And I kind of chuckled. I said, what do you mean reads to me? He said, everything here, you can eat. That's You can eat that. That's fine. But that stuff in those other, other shelves, leave it on the shelf. Because first of all, it's been sitting there, who knows, God knows how long. And mm. those chemicals you're putting in your body is what's causing you problems. Yeah. So what wow. I say to people is, mm. I, am a, I am a tale of caution. I don't mm. take what happened to me and go, oh, woe is me. I can't believe this all. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, I have a person called, mm. I just say I have a mm. spirit known as the master planner. Mm. And the master planner said, Dr. Dre, I'm going to get you up so you can motivate, inspire, and show people what not to do, but then you're going to inform them on what to do. Right. And I need you out there doing that because it's an everyday struggle. We yes, all do. We all come home with a little lazy. Let me grab this. It's right here. Let me grab that. It's Dr. right there. Dre. But Dr. when you Dre. start to prepare your meals ahead of time, when mm. you shop in the mindset of what's going to be the best for me, the first thing I did is mm. I dropped the chicken. I dropped the beef. I dropped the pork. I'm still in the fish, but I'm about to drop that. And when you talk about going to certain extremes, it's because I want to detox my body. Well, you have that, to get these chemicals Dr. out Dre, of your body that Dr. you take Dre, if every I could, day. We, we're running out a little bit of time here, so I wanted to answer one or two of the questions that are in the chat. Um, and Angie kind of hit on it, uh, on vascular disease, when she talked about cigarette smoking as being one of the risk factors for developing vascular disease, which contributes to the uh, small arteries in your lower extremities uh, constricting and reducing blood flow to the toes and the feet and the lower leg. Uh, and this is the same process that goes with uh, why we develop kidney disease and diabetes. And there's some basic things that your doctor will be looking at on a regular basis to check, to, to look into those things and questions that they ask about your symptoms or lack thereof. But if you're a smoker and you're diabetic 
and you have a certain age, then doing uh, arterial dopplers of your lower extremities will help uh, evaluate and what's called ankle brachial indices will help evaluate whether or not you have vascular disease uh, and prompt other treatments, right? Because just treating, you know, we think that sometimes um, we, we want to believe that just treating the diet and exercise piece is all you need. But in clinical practice, there are other things that we also uh, encourage our, our patients to uh, partake in, such as cholesterol-lowering medications, aspirin therapy, what we call antiplatelet therapy, uh, to help uh, prevent some of these things, uh, including heart disease, which is another uh, complication of diabetes. Um, and diet is important. I saw a question in there about uh, brown rice and things of that nature. Well, and also another question about it uh, or statement about uh, not eliminating all carbs. I don't think uh, eliminating all carbs is, is something that you should do because vegetables and fruit are carbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not eliminating all carbs. You're just eating smarter. There's certain foods that are carbohydrates that will raise yes. your blood sugars faster than others. So you have to be smart about it and you have to see a nutritionist about it to find out what are the best ways to maintain some carbs in your diet. And if you're on medications routinely, then uh, that lower your blood sugar, you need some kind of carbohydrate to keep you from dropping too low. Okay. And, uh, and as far as um, reversing your diabetes, well, diabetes, no matter how low your normal, your A1C becomes, and we say you beat it, you kind of still have to maintain uh, monitoring and things of that nature, because if you slip with your diet, gain weight, it will come back. It's never a hundred percent gone. Okay. Right. Unless you get a pancreatic transplant. Okay. No, but that's what need... doc, doctor, just for a quick minute, may mm -hmm. interject because I didn't have poor circulation. And when I had my mm -hmm. first amputation on my toe, the doctor said, infection. if I didn't know you bleed and your circulation was this good, I would not have done this. Okay. And no, as, no, I wasn't as, saying as that that's through, okay. That's why you got to go to your physicians and mm -hmm. speak and listen to what they're saying and check up on yourself. There, there are many things you can do. As you said, it's not about elimination of carbs. It's about moderation and balance. That's right. the biggest thing. That's if you're thing. eating more greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds, and you want to balance something in there. Like I don't eat rice. I don't like eating rice anymore. I don't like eating pasta anymore for reasons I know what it does to my body, but I am a food addict and I am a bread eater, but I have to break that too. So I, I find other things to substitute that work better for me. It's about the substitutions. It's about how do you find to readjust your palate? Because the way we ate, eat is the way we were raised on the foods that we have. That's why there's such an explosion on type two diabetes. Because when this thing started this way, we were eating, we used to eat with the family, then we decided to eat on the run. And when you eat on the run, it sounds like it's fun, but in the long haul, that's what brings you to, to where we are right now. We that, have to find that, better right. ways of moderation. Okay. okay. I, I just wanted to say one thing in substituting for the foods. I eat a lot of peppers, green, yellow, red, orange peppers, but I use yes. cauliflower. I grate cauliflower and that becomes my rice. I cook that in a very light olive oil or peanut oil and um, it, it substitutes for rice. So, you know, your mindset thinks you're eating rice, but you're really eating cauliflower mixed with all these vegetables and it's delicious. Yeah. Angie, have you ever heard of cauliflower pizza? Yes. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I eat cauliflower pizza. It's made with cauliflower. Them. So it no longer has the, it gives you the same taste like the bread, but the cauliflower is better for you. And I only usually get sauce and then I'll put cheese put on it because I really okay. remove a lot of dairy out of my, out of my diet. That's right. That's right. Well, um, I was trying to look and see if there's any other questions that I can answer real quick. Okay. Uh, uh, medically. I know we're about to really run out of time. Um, and I can try if I can, I don't know if I can, uh, we'll be able to answer some of those questions after we're done, but I can try to, um, uh, to answer them. Um, I'm looking through the, through the queue right now, but I think these are great questions. Uh, some of them can be in statements. Uh, they're all, I don't know if you guys are seeing them, but, uh, people are loving what you're saying. And, uh, I think it's a good thing. I think that this is a great forum. Uh, and we need more like this so people can understand what's going on uh, and more time so we can really answer these questions. 
uh, that people have. And um, what I'm trying to do uh, is and, you know, not to be, uh, so put my Western medicine hat on and say, this is what you absolutely have to do uh, in regards to managing diabetes. But, you know, we had to look at it from all sides, right? And I'm a firm believer in, uh, again, how our diet affects us and uh, exercise mm -hmm. affects us when we're diabetic. And I'm not saying, again, eliminate those certain things out of your diet. But if you're a person whose A1C is really, really high, and what the A1C means is a hemoglobin A1C, and it's a test we use to monitor and manage diabetes. And when your A1C, if anyone's on the line, is, is 9, 10, 11, 12, I've had people who are 14 when they presented to me uh, uh, with diabetes. If you're that high, your risk for uh, diabetic complications, if you leave it that way and don't take care of yourself, is going to be very high. And then that complicates life because if you can't, you know, see to go to work, if it depends on what you do for a living, you can't, you got to go to dialysis three days out of the week because you didn't take care of your diabetes, then that complicates life. And those people around you who have to take you to dialysis and to doctor's appointments and things like that. Um, and yes, there was one question about inheritance. Um, if you have uh, one of the questions that uh, your primary care physician should be asking you about is your family's medical history. And if you have uh, first degree relatives, meaning mom, dad, or a sibling with type two diabetes, you're more, you're susceptible to receiving or developing, uh, let me, my phone is going crazy here, um, to developing diabetes. And these are one of the risks. So if you're obese, or overweight and have a family history of diabetes, I would recommend that you have a hemoglobin A1C drawn on you annually. Okay, and if your A1C is above the uh, pre-existing kind of range, or say, say pre-diabetes, which I'm sure everybody has heard, it's somewhere between 5.7 and 6.4, then you should begin screening at least twice a year for development of diabetes. And then you should also be implementing dietary changes and uh, increasing your physical activity to uh, help manage those numbers because there's a great chance that you could become diabetic. There was a question or a statement about, uh, from a young lady who uh, developed gestational diabetes when she was pregnant. So you're at increased risk for developing diabetes as you get older. So as you are um, living your life, you need to start now to live healthy, right? Don't smoke, mm -hmm. right? Eat healthy. You know, we talk about the fruits and vegetables, and I know that that's, a, that's sometimes a tough topic because a lot of us live in food deserts and we can't, don't have as much access to fresh vegetables and fresh fruit, um, but we got to make an effort, right? Uh, and it is actually more expensive for some people to um, be able to obtain these things, So, but you got to do the best you can, and if you can't, then you have to reduce those things in your diet. Some people... Uh, you know, they spend their lives eating at fast food restaurants uh, and things of that nature to, uh, because that's where they can afford to go. You can still at this time in, uh, in our country, eat healthy even at McDonald's, right? You don't have to have that Big Mac, right? You don't have to have a quarter pounder and fries, right? You can get a salad, right? Uh, I wouldn't eat chicken nuggets because you don't know what's in it. It's just in general. So, but, you know, we have to, change our attitudes when it comes to our health um, and find a place to go and talk to your primary care physician. You know, friends and family are great. Some of them have really good advice and some are getting their advices in the wrong place. And so you have to be able to discern that and, and say, okay, this is good stuff. This is not good stuff. Is this real? Is it not real? It's like, well, we're living in a disinformation age right now. So I would advise everyone to do your research. And we said that earlier, yes. I think uh, Angie and uh, Dr. Dre said that you got to check things out. And even when you, even when someone like myself who's a physician tells you something that doesn't sound right, you can always get online and look things up for yourself, right? There's so much information out there, but you got to go to the right source, okay? I, uh, another thing, Dr. Spears, I, I, if we got time to just touch on, 
the importance of when you're diagnosed with more than one ailment and diabetes is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I'm concerned about that because having sarcoidosis as well as diabetes, the prednisone that I was given helped to increase diabetes Absolutely. sugar levels uh, and it'll take it way over the top. So if you're battling with more than one illness, it's very important that if you have diabetes and you're taking medications uh, like prednisone that enhances diabetes, you have to really stay on top of it because your sugar levels can go in the hundreds very quickly on prednisone, which again, uh, one thing is helping one thing and then it's tearing mm -hmm. down another thing. So we have to be mindful of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And your, your primary care physician or the person who's prescribing those medications should be able to tell you that your blood sugar is gonna go up with this drug and you need to do X, Y, Z to help keep your numbers down. So for example, if you're a person who's on insulin and you're receiving uh, prednisone uh, for some inflammatory process or treating sarcoidosis, some other illness like lupus or something like that, then you need to make adjustments in the dosing of your medication and your doctor should be able to help direct that uh, to you. Right. And, and go forward. Well, also doc, doc um, some people ask questions about the cost of vegetables and fruits in the area. You mm -hmm. can buy frozen vegetables and frozen fruit yes. and use it at your discretion the same mm -hmm. way as if you would go and buy uh, chicken and freeze it or, or beef and freeze it. The thing is, it's about changing the chemistry in there, not only with your physician's help and based on, like Angie said, what you're taking, you have to understand that because it can spike your um, sugar too, as well as diminish your sugar. I mean, at mm -hmm. one point, my A1C was at a 14. I brought it down to under so a was six. mine. Oof. So it was, it was a process of understanding what I was eating, how much I was eating. And like I said, I'm a mm -hmm. confessed food addict. So food for me, I got to be careful about everything. When I walk by, when I walk by a grocery store, I got my sugar just spikes just walking by a grocery store. <laughs> so I got to be careful to make, make proper choices. But we all <laughs> get off the wagon. But the thing is, getting back on the wagon and staying consistent with what you need to do to help yourself. That's why always consult your physicians and that would be your primary, your endocrinologist and just consult your family, consult your friends and some people who know. Mm -hmm. Even in healthcare and as far as your exercise program is concerned. My son comes now and he's working dad out because he's like, dad, we're going to work on your core. We're going to bring this down. And I'm going to show you. And I go, son, I do this every morning. No, but I'm here to help you. But that's called love. And a lot of it comes from the mental, the spiritual, and then the physical. So we have to, the information's out there. And I wish we had more time on the panel and maybe we gotta find a way to do a big extension and a full blown situation so that we can all talk and we can listen and we can hear the chats properly because this is life saving. COVID is one thing, but diabetes, kidney disease, these things are for real. They Absolutely. are for real. And we got to start with what we can control. And that's what we're putting in our bodies. And detoxing that poison out of your body, it should be primary number one. Because when you do that, your energy will come back. You can almost reverse everything in your diabetes. And even though I'm blind now, I still believe, and the master plan has told me, I will see it again. Okay. But I have to get these toxins out of my body. And only I can do that. So guess what? If I can do it, you can do it. Because the only constant in the universe is change. Angie, so I you love want... you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, Angie, you want to have a final word? I just want to say to the people that uh, diabetes is something that we have to take seriously. Um, more so than all the medications that we have to take, that we first have to mentally medicate our minds so that we can, the thought process is that of living and not dying, uh, not being defeated by the things we don't understand. Educate yourself, get yourself in a place where you can reverse whatever is possible to reverse. I did. All right. All right. Well, I am so happy for both of you. Uh, and that you've been able to uh, manage your diabetes in, in such a way that is admirable. And if everyone did that, I might be out of work. You know, I, I don't know whether I like that or not, but you know, I, I want my patients to be like you. I want people to, 
to understand what it takes. And it's a commitment, you know, it's like marriage, right? It's a commitment yes. to it. And then you can make these things happen so that you don't have these complications that we hear about and see every day in our communities. Um, there were a bunch of uh, questions on there um, that we just probably won't be able to get to because we've been told that we got to get off. So, but I'm hoping that the 345 people that have been on this on this uh, virtual meeting have gained some knowledge and some help Absolutely. in what we've had to say. And I will have uh, my email uh, available for people who may have questions about uh, diabetes. I'm, I, you know, will try to answer those questions. And my email address, I'll give it right now, is real simple. It's my name, Reginald Spears, MD, at sbcglobal.net. That's S as in Sam. Okay. And you can send me a message. Uh, uh, I'll try to answer it as best I can. If you have questions and we'll go from there, we'll keep, uh, hopefully we'll do this again. Um, and um, in the near future, I believe uh, my uh, fraternity brother, uh, who is our director of social action, put a reminder in the chat that March is diabetes awareness month. So there'll be other things that'll be available for folks and uh, we can get a little bit more in depth in some of the other uh, management aspects of, of diabetes, because I'm sure there are questions about that use of medications and things of those natures and uh, what I would call proper follow-up, right? And management, because one of the things I noticed once I was doing a talk and uh, a young lady uh, was speaking, uh, uh, erupted my talk, um, and she had a, she was contrary to what I was saying. And I've asked her questions about her as she had diabetes. And she said, yes. I said, well, you know, do you know what you are you in control? She says, yes. I said, well, what's your A1C? And she didn't know what that meant. Right. And so we need to know how to go and talk to our doctors about diabetes and trying to figure out whether we have it or not. When do we get screened? What does the test mean? to us. And these are things and what do I need to do to prevent some of these other complications? Because there are lots of things that we need to do, whether you get your numbers under control or not. So there's a lot of stuff that still has been unsaid <clears throat> about what, what Western medicine says we need to do. Okay. So, um, Deidre, are we done? We are. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. It was a great conversation. Thank you all. Thank you, Deidre. Thank you. Thank you, you guys everybody. Be blessed. Thank you, I Deidre. From Thank you. you, Black Health Matters. Yes, and anybody wanting to reach out for me, you can reach me at the Angie Stone on Instagram. I can communicate with you as well as Facebook. My handle is the same across the board. I'd be more than happy to answer questions.